right, well, happy Monday, COP family. My name is Larisha Johnson, and welcome to your weekend recap. We have returning with us this week, Minister Lewis. How are you doing, sir? I am well, man. What's going on, Center Praise family? Good to see you guys. We What's are going on, Sister we're always so excited to have you, so thanks for joining <laughs> us this week. Of course, of course. And we have with us our very own Bishop Lovelace and a very special guest. Who do we have with us today, Bishop? We have Lady Di and my first grandchild, and her name is Eliza Rose Lovelace. She is precious. That is her. Look at her. She is gorgeous. Oh, my yes. gosh. She was born on the 2nd of March, oh. 7 pounds, 10 ounces. She's a big girl. Yeah, and mom and dad are doing well, so they were over here having dinner, so I said, well, let me put her on so everybody can see her and know who she yeah. is and Proud won't Papa. be your last time seeing her. So <laughs> just want to put her on for a second and she's going to go. Now she's going to go home. You know, they're good <laughs> to have visit. And then, and now bye-bye. <laughs> the part about grandchildren, they can go home. Exactly. So and my mom said, it's oh, precious. You know, that's, that, I've heard that from grandparents. They said, that's what my mother said. She said, I love hanging out with, with, with my grandbabies. I'll sugar them up and give them right back back to you. I'm like, that's not right. Don't do that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, goodness. Well, congratulations. Yeah, she's a cutie. She's precious. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, she's a cutie. We're very proud of her. Oh, my gosh. I am ready. <laughs> After this, I will be on Amazon looking for all the things to send your way. I love baby <laughs> gifts. So thank you for sharing her. We're so excited. Thank to you. All. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to focus and switch gears because babies get me all Yes. <laughs> so precious. But this, let's talk through um, the message for this week. Before we jump in, I wanted to remind the folks that they can find the sermon notes on our website and also on our COP mobile app. So make sure you're going and downloading the notes and watching the sermon again. This one was really, I think, really meaty. So you definitely want to go back and, and listen to it and, mm -hmm. and pick up things that you didn't previously. And so what we're talking through this week is part six of the attributes of the Holy Spirit and part three of the oil. And one of the things I wanted to do, Bishop, and kind of spend some time here is unpack a little bit uh, of one of the very first points that you bring up in the teaching. And it's this idea that, you know, as far as the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Spirit in our lives, it's, it's first the, the, the blood, the atonement, then the oil, yes. then the power. Right. So yeah. why was yes. that? Why do you think that was so important that we spend time to really get that understanding of its atonement first? Well, I, I think it goes back to the reality that the Holy Spirit is is designated to indwell believers, that yes. the Holy Spirit is not this uh, nebulous, uh, just kind of spirit just floating around. You hear a lot of people talk about spirituality. They talk about spirit. Uh, they talk about um, you know th this this idea that we are all connected to spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reality is we're all connected to human spirit, but we're not all connected to Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, the Holy Spirit does not dwell in temples that are unclean, and so He only dwells within. Uh, temples that have been redeemed, temples that have been restored to relationship with God through Christ, uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, the, the idea here is that uh, the only way that we are able to even access the things of the Spirit is through the work of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the shedding of blood, without the shedding of blood, there's no life. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the blood... And the, and the fact that Jesus Christ is our atonement then opens the door for us to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so that, that was the whole focus of that, uh, that not everyone has the Holy Spirit. That is false doctrine. Not everyone uh, has the Spirit of God living in them. That is false. All have, again, uh, human spirit. And without regeneration through acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ, our human spirit is dead. Mm -hmm. We're not made alive until we receive 
the spirit of Christ in us. So our human spirit uh, is dead in sin. We, we're dead in sin. We're, we're functioning. We're, well, I, I used to use the analogy, we're the walking dead. Yeah. We are spiritually dead, but, but through the Holy Spirit coming in, we have been made alive in Christ. Mm. That's really good. Yeah. Cause it just, that gave me so much um, pause because again, you, you know this in your brain, but just really taking time to think and connect the dots. I was like, that's, that's right. There is, there's, there's no power, no access to that power without the blood of Jesus, without the sacrifice that he made. Look, that's a great point. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, Minister Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that again, that was a wonderful point there. I think it's, it's just important uh, it was a good reminder because you, you said something you, you were saying, Bishop, in the sermon. And I, I like illustrations that that how that, you know, it comes alive for me and use the illustration of how people say, oh, I, I, when I get myself together, you know, I'm, you know, when I get it right, I'm going to give my life to, to Christ. Right. And I'm, 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 I'm going to get saved. And like you said, you're going to be waiting. You'll be waiting for a long time mm -hmm. if, if it's on you, if it's depending upon you. And so it takes nothing but the blood. Of, of Jesus, like you said, the hymn, you, you, you quoted the hymn, you know, what can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? You know, nothing but the blood. And then when you put the oil, the anointing of the Holy Spirit on top of the, the cleansed, you know, vessel, now some power, some things can happen, some things can move, right? But like, like you said, Bishop, you know, uh, Holy Spirit is not going to dwell within an, an unclean vessel. And, and, you know, salvation, it was, it's a bloody business, right? It was bloody. And so it takes the blood for the purity to come forth. You know, it takes something that would quote unquote stain you to clean you. So uh, I love it. I love it. That was that was a great point, Bishop. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that brings us uh, a good segue into the kind of the meat of, of the teaching Bishop, which was we were taught, you were teaching through Leviticus 14, 10 through 18 and giving the details as far as what that process was for uh, the leper who has experienced healing and now they're, you know, being folded back into into community and there's this whole process that they they go through with the priests, right? And there's there's the um, anointing of the ear and the anointing of of the thumb and the big toe and then the whole, you know, their whole head, right? So all these different yeah. points. But what I thought was really interesting, I didn't it, I didn't really connect the dots until later on in the day. Actually, the teaching had been done and I'm going about my day and it just the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to say something hit me. The Holy Spirit really just dropped <laughs> my spirit that. You know, the, like the leper was being brought back into community, and and this was a public affirmation that the priest was doing that this person, yeah, I know what you saw that they went through, but they're anointed to hear from God. You know, their ha God's hands are are upon their hands, and they're consecrated in this community. And I wanted to just hear more of that, Bishop, and and what like those public affirmations. What's that? The significance of that for us. Well, uh, you, you know, it's fascinating you bring that up because that particular passage um, is one of the few references that we have regarding uh, lepers, mm -hmm. uh, those who have been uh, suffering with the disease of leprosy. And there's only uh, a couple of direct references to someone even being healed mm -hmm. of leprosy. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, once in the Old Testament, once in the New and so uh, you don't find a lot of references in regards to there being someone who was actually healed of leprosy, but yet you find this provision being made and being given in the law or in the Leviticus uh, uh, statement that references, this is what you do if a person has leprosy and they experience healing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that most certainly it addresses uh, physical healing. It addresses uh, the very same thing that uh, uh, we would find would be necessary for Naaman. It'd be necessary for the uh, leper who was healed and the lepers who were healed in yeah. scripture mm -hmm. in the New Testament under Jesus's ministry. So the provision is given there, but I think even more so it is a reference to uh, redemption yeah. and restoration yes. for we who are believers. Uh, remember, what we see in the Old Testament is always a shadow yeah. of that which is to come. And so you look at the old in the light of the new. So all we did today, when we looked through this uh, sermon this past weekend, all we did was look at an account of provision. 
mm-hmm. in the light of what Christ has done. Mm-hmm. So Christ, our high priest, is the one now who has made the provision for us to now to go and show ourselves mm-hmm. and in presenting ourselves the the whole context of the anointing, the application of the blood, the application of the oil is a direct reference to uh, the the experience of the infilling Mm -hmm. of the spirit of Christ through reception of Jesus Christ, the application of the blood, the the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. So those two male lambs, they are referencing the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the oil is a direct reference into the ministry of the Holy Spirit, uh, that healing component, that empowerment component, the component that is used to bring light uh, by the burning and so forth that takes place of the oil. All of this was again, shadows uh, of what Christ has done for us. So yes, uh, thank God for the provision it was given for those who certainly received physical healing because they were outcasts. Yeah, right. Yeah. We were outcasts. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. We were yeah. outcasts. They were outcasts. <laughs> yeah. uh, they could not come in except, except through the priests. Yeah. Come on. We could not come in except through the priests. Come on. So, so you, you start putting it together. You know, come they on. have the cleansing <laughs> of the blood, the application of the blood. We had yeah. to have the application of the blood. Yeah. We had to have the oil put upon that. And we had to have the oil as well. So yeah. all of this, again, it was provision for practical purposes of getting these individuals reinstated into the community. Mm-hmm. It was also spiritual application for having us restored back to the beloved community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Work <laughs> for me. I was literally going about my day cleaning up, and I was like, "Oh, oh, oh!" That's- <laughs> yeah. Okay, I get it now. Powerful. You said it right there. I was, and that's what I was thinking as you were talking. I was like, it's just restoration. Yeah. It's just putting us back, back in relationship, restoring our relationship back with the Father. And now, when you say restoration, I almost threw my pencil. Just like that's it. Boom. Yeah. Done. Close the laptop. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Drops mic. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was, man. Yeah. 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 I think it. Yeah, it was just one of those aha moments again. Just going through my day, like, oh wait a minute. <sighs> I see what you did there, Lord. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 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 interesting. It's interesting because uh Bishop, you know, I you know, I did the teaching with the youth about the tabernacle and all the different, you know, pieces and everything, you know, the intricacies of that. And, you know, reading this today, and I, I was I was I, I'm sure some of the youth were listening and I know they remembered like, oh wow, yo, we went over this. Like this is this is the restoration part. This is the bringing back into relationship, the oil, wow, the blood, you know, you know, the altar of incense, all this kind of stuff. They, they were, I know they were putting the pieces together mm-hmm. and that was, it was, yes. it was spot. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. One, one of the things if I think um, I'm going to pull it up on my, my notes here on the um, mm-hmm. our app, we have all our sermon notes. One of the things I wanted to make sure we talk through was um, some of those um, intric- intricacies that we talked through, the first part being the ear that was anointed uh, with the blood and the oil, and that, and that speaks of guidance and direction and knowing the will of God. And you you brought up that illustration, Bishop, about the sheep hearing um, the shepherd's voice and knowing the shepherd's voice. Yeah. No matter yeah. what yeah. was out there, the moment they heard their shepherd's voice, they kind of you know made their way on into, into the direction yes. of Calling them, so we could just spend a little time there. I think Minister Lewis, you said you had a question about that as well. Yeah, it's uh, not really a question. Just one saying that was a really great analogy, and it, it reminded me of when I was a kid, when I was younger. I remember I would be in the grocery store, and my mom, you know, I, if I needed to go get something or whatever from another aisle or something, and my sister had my sister and I had this call, you know, it, she would make this certain noise, and I knew it was nobody but her. And my ear, like you said, Bishop, my ear was attuned to that call. And I think as, as believers, just that just reminded me again, you know, as believers, you know, there are many things we hear in a day. And, and I mean, day in and day out, you know, different uh, uh, theology, you know, different type, you know, theology, different belief systems, different practices, all kind of stuff. But 
uh, you know, and we're exposed to it. You know, we're like you said, Bishop, we're in the world, right? We're, we're here, we're, we're planted in it. And, but you said it so, so perfectly that once, once, once our Savior calls, it'll, it's something in us, regardless of everything that's going on, that dies away. And we know to hear and adhere to the voice of God. So that was that was so good, man. That was really good. Thank you. Yeah, well, and you know, the, the exciting thing, uh, I, I always resonate with that particular part of the uh, teaching when it talks about hearing God's voice. Um, that resonates in my heart because part of my experience, and I think I mentioned this, of going to Oral Roberts University, I don't think I mentioned it this weekend, but in previous teachings, was that uh, President Roberts, uh, part of the call and mandate that was on his life and his assignment was to raise up students to hear God's voice. And he would uh, reiterate that over and over again with us. So in my attending there, uh, although I was familiar with experiencing uh, hearing God's voice in my spirit, as I said, I've never per se heard him audibly, but I've heard him speak loud enough in my spirit that I thought it was audible. And uh, it was very, very much, you know, clear to me, God is talking, whether I was 12 years old, whether I was 15 years old, uh, even as a seven-year-old. And then later in life, even in hearing in 1982, the directive that God gave me to plant Center of Praise, uh, all of this came through the ministry of the Holy Spirit speaking and, and hearing his voice. And so... Ultimately, it, it does play itself out as the shepherd who leads his sheep. Uh, you know, we, we don't follow just any voice. Uh, John 10 brings this out tremendously, uh, yeah. where they, uh, the, the concept of, again, the shepherd, the great shepherd, the good shepherd, uh, and the fact that the sheep are so in tune that even as they're going through the narrow alleyways of of the city or Jerusalem or whatever the small town may be, as they're going through these little narrow arteries in the street, these tributaries, there are thieves who are hidden out on the side, calling out at them, but they will not follow yeah. that thief's voice. The thief is calling at them as they go out every day out to pasture as they go in and out, out of the sheep gate into the pasture. I taught on this once. And as they go out to pasture, these thieves are hiding in these dark alleys and they're crying out at them, but they won't follow them. They don't know their voice. They're unfamiliar with the voice of the thief. That's why John 10 and 10 says that the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But wow. Christ, who is our good shepherd, he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So the tuning of our ears is not just something we do uh, in a Sunday morning sit in church experience. The tuning of our ears is that which we do daily right. till uh, as we shared last week in the recap, it is almost, uh, it would be unnatural for us to go through a given day and not hear God's voice. Yeah. It would be concerning for us to go through even an hour and not know the presence of God and him speaking to us. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, again, not just, you know, it doesn't have to be this earth shattering, wall shaking experience. It's just, you're so in tune to it. You just hear it. He's just constantly talking mm -hmm. and there's no fanfare. There's no Hammond B3. There's no drums. There's no tambourines being tossed. All it is, is that you walk with him, you talk with him, you commune with him, you think on him, he thinks on you, he talks to you. I mean, it's, it's conversation yeah. throughout the entire day. So again, um, that resonated in my own heart. And then, of course, ultimately to hear him call us in the great uh, catching away of the church. Uh, the reality is, uh, if you tune your ear now, you will hear him then. You will hear, yeah. <laughs> you will yeah. hear the sound of the Lord calling for us. Uh, so uh, it, it will just come natural. We'll be going about our day and the Lord says, come my people. We're, we're gone. It. <laughs> That's it. And you, you, Bishop, you answered the question uh, that pops up in so many people's minds. And even for those who are 
believers and non-believers who say, you know, how do, how do I know I hear from God or how do, how do I hear from God or, or how do I know he's speaking to me? Right. And you answered it. It's the, the day to day. It doesn't have, like you said, it doesn't have to be a wall shattering, earth shattering. Boom. I'm God. Here I am. No, just, just being the in tune, being attuned yeah. to his presence yeah. and his presence will reveal what, what, whatever you need for that particular time, day, whatnot, you know, his presence will reveal and whatnot. So you asked that, that was spot on because I get that question. And I think we get that a lot as just people, as believers, people may talk to us in the streets and those who are watching uh, the Center Praise family or whomever, you get that question, I'm sure, you know, how do I know I'm hearing from God? Well, that bishop just gave the answer right there. He just gave yeah. the answer right there. Just being in tune, just yeah. being in tune. It don't have to be nothing major, but, but God is speaking, especially in this day and age, especially in this season. God oh. is speaking. Yes, he he yeah, is speaking not... loud and clear. Yeah. Do you understand yeah. me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it is not hard to hear God's voice, and it works in conjunction or in alignment with our observation. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're watching, what we're seeing, will also what we're observing, it will work in alignment with us hearing the voice of God. Give an example. Uh, we're getting some uh, old pews in the Legacy Center taken out of the sanctuary because they're not conducive to what we're going to need as far as future worship gatherings and what have you. So there are these old oak pews that are heavy <laughs> and uh, we're having them taken out and, you know, giving them to different churches and organizations that are calling us for them. Well, so we had one church that was driving about a five hour drive uh, somewhere out near uh, Bakersfield and beyond. And uh, they uh, left at four o'clock in the morning to come and meet with the uh, men at the church to get these pews taken out. Well, they just had two flatbed trucks. They didn't have hardly, you know, very meager means of holding these tiny hold things down. Yeah. yeah, you know, it was it was kind of interesting. But they're driving on the road. They're coming down the freeway, and the wife uh, of one of the parishioners, she's in the front seat, and you know, she's concerned how we're going to be able to do this. And as they're driving down the road about halfway, they look, she looks out on the side of the freeway and there are these industrial strength um, mm. uh, 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 tie downs with the Straps. clamps yeah. and everything, straps that you would actually yeah. see used wow. to ship items on flatbed trucks. And there's just a bunch of them. And the wife says, there's some, there's some uh, straps over there by the, on the side of the freeway, just sitting there in the middle of open. And, <laughs> and they stop the truck, they go over, and, and all of the straps that they needed to tie down those benches were all securely, over. they were all there. Oh my goodness. Come on now. Now, come on now. We know that's nothing but God. Come on now. <laughs> you know, in the middle of the freeway, in the middle of yeah. nowhere, out on Highway 99 or 5, I think they were actually on 5, and it was in the middle of a desolate area and just sitting on the side of the road. And everybody, you know, except the driver is asleep and the wife. And she's sitting there with her head back and she looks over to the right. And she says, wait a minute, stop. There, there's some uh, straps sitting there at the side of the road. And they've got the metal industrial clamps that you got to clamp down and yeah. everything. Everything's yeah. secure. They were able to take all of the pews that they needed wow. for their church to be a blessing to their church. And I said, wherever God gives a vision, he gives provision, he gives provision. all the time. But you have to have your ear tuned. Mm -hmm. And as you tune your ear, it works also what you set your sight to, what you set your vision towards, what you are observing if you're always observing negativity it's going to be hard to hear god's voice if you're always observing foolishness and getting involved in drama it's going to be hard to detect and to, and to, to discern the voice of god but when you keep your eyes focused on the objective of what god has given you for your vision for your house the yep. vision for your marriage the vision for your children the vision for your ministry then god with that vision will begin to speak and articulate what it is that you are seeing, yeah. what it is that you are hearing. Uh, no wonder the prophet says, 
I, I hear the sound mm. of the abundance mm. of rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even before it rains, he hears it. Mm. Yeah. You hear, I really believe as you tune in, the, the more you tune in in your hearing, mm. the sharper your vision becomes. Mm. And you will begin to see what other folks don't see. And you see. hear it and they still looking around trying to figure out where. <laughs> but you you hear deliverance come. I keep telling people I hear the yeah. uh, the sound of the saints rejoicing. I keep hearing a shout among the saints, and I get all these folks around me talking. Well, it's still COVID nineteen, and we're still socially distancing. And da 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 da. And I said, you don't see what I hear. Yes, Ooh, I love that. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and what I hear, Ooh. me, what I hear is what I see. Okay, I have <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I speak. What I hear, I see, and what I see, I speak. That's how we walk by faith and not by sight. How do we walk by faith and not by sight? By hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. hearing. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and continually hearing the word of God. That's how you're able to walk by faith and not by what you see, because your eyesight is not what you're relying upon. Your spiritual sight is what you're relying upon. Ooh, Bishop, I'm about to run up out of here. <laughs> you know this, but Holy Spirit was- hey man, Wait, 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 wait. Oh, everybody man. watching, y'all gotta, you oh. gotta rewind. You need to rewind just yeah. to pass a minute because you gotta catch what Bishop just said. He said, you can't see yes. what I hear. Come on. Do you understand the, the weight of that? Mm. That <laughs> I um God. Go ahead. Wow. That's Go ahead. yeah, it's that's heavy, you guys. I'm I'm just saying, Bishop, that that's heavy because it, it just speaks to vision, it speaks to yeah. it being so in tune. And though you may though people like you say, people, you can't you may not be able to see it, you can't fathom it. Eyes have not seen nor ears hurt, you can't fathom it yet. It hasn't into it hasn't sunk into you because you're not in tune the way I am, but the way I'm in tune, it's reality. Yeah. So I'm speaking things and Bishop, and I'm just sharing if, if you don't mind sharing this. There were things Bishop was sharing meetings. We'd be in meetings and saying, you know, I see this and we're gonna be doing this and doing this. We're getting ready to do this. And he would always say, you know, how is it that, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, a church buys a property? And I'm like, how did how did you see that? Right? But I'm understanding with what you're saying, you heard something that we, we couldn't see yet, but you heard it and you moved. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think for you, yes. for, for everybody listening, if you, and I, I want to encourage everybody, if you're hearing something, if God is saying something, move. It may not yeah. make sense. Move. It, 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 do, it may not look accurate for the time, right? It doesn't look appropriate for the time, but still move. Mm. right just still move because you never know like what wh who's going to be blessed by you just listening and being in tune yeah right yeah but anyway that that was that i'm putting a circle around that one that was good sir thank you Bishop. and i'll i'm, I'm just going <laughs> to say this real quick because you brought the scripture up so I yeah said, let me let me go to it and that scripture that you brought up in uh first corinthians chapter two and uh, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, it actually says these words, however it is written, uh, eyes have not seen nor ears heard what the uh, human mind has conceived. Now, oh. this is in the NIV, what the human mind has conceived. It says the things of God, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Come on. Then it goes on to say, God, get that 10th verse in there. These are the things God has revealed to us yes. by his spirit. So eyes have not seen, ears have not uh, heard uh, the things that God has prepared for us, the things that get, get, cannot be conceived in the human mind, but got to get 10th verse in there, but the Holy right. Spirit has revealed it to us. Yes. Yes. Come on, bring it revealed it to us. So uh, this is the thing yeah. that, you know, because we used to sing that song when I was growing up. We used to sing, eyes haven't heard, uh, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, 
all the things God has in store for me, just wait and see. And we were talking about when we all get to heaven, then eyes will see, ears will hear. But then he said, no, 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 no. This isn't good when you get to heaven. He says, no, your human capabilities, the, the eyes and the ears, they cannot fathom yeah. Yeah. in the human reasoning the great things that God has stored. Uh, I would have never in my own wisdom known that God would have a place of the magnitude of a center of praise right. that would impact thousands of lives. I was just a little 22 year old kid trying to get my college education. Mm -hmm. I would have never fathomed that in my own mind. I can go further. There are other things that I've seen along the way. The, the ability to uh, be able to have a blessed family, the ability to uh, come out of a home that uh, from being a divorce, uh, being with, uh, you know, having parents that were divorced and, 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 and thinking, would I be able to be able to have a blessed marriage myself, you know, having experience being in a single parent home and so forth. And yet, aren't we glad that the Holy Spirit reveals to us, he shows us things that we cannot see in the natural. And he enables us to proclaim and to declare those things. And as he does, then we begin to walk in it. Because it's one thing to have it revealed to you. It's another thing to have it revealed to you and walk in it. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. That's good. Now, some folks are living well beneath hmm. their privileges. They have shouted. They have fell out on the floor. They've gotten prophecy after prophecy. Yes. But really... What I would encourage many of the saints to do is to go back and take everything that has ever been spoken over you that you knew was God, not foolishness, but that which was clearly God that edified you, that encouraged you, that gave you a sense of direction and a sense of hope. And somewhere along the lines, because again, of other voices, you've, you've just kind of discarded that, you've dismissed some of yeah. those early prophetic words that were sown into you. And the beautiful thing about God's word, it will not return unto him void. It well, will accomplish that which he has purposed it to do. Yeah. So the same word that you have yet to walk in, it's Come still on. valid. That Hallelujah. same word that said that God would make you the head and not the tail of Hallelujah. the need 10 years ago is good right now. Yes, Lord. Saint, regardless of what has happened, regardless of the mistakes, the sin, yeah. the failures, the, the you know, uh, disobedience yeah. the, so the word will stay right there in place mm -hmm. until you say yes and yes, all Lord. it's waiting on is you to attach yourself to the voice that god shared and spoke with you and told you that told you that you were going to make it that told yes, you Lord. that you were going to be a success that yeah. told Come you and, and, uh, now you you sitting up there looking at the d's and the f's that you got in junior college and talking about there is no hope. You better go back and get that last oh. word that God mm -hmm. spoke to you and listen to the voice of God and listen to the Holy Spirit. Be guided by that. Don't be guided yeah. by yesterday's mistakes. Be yeah. guided by the word that is still spoken and it is ready for fulfillment within your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that was for no, Hallelujah. that was for me. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, like Bishop, you don't know. The Holy Spirit was dealing with me yesterday, just, just Hallelujah. having me just. Um, he was saying you uh, bring in a laser focus to me, bringing me into a laser focus, and you speaking about um, you don't see what I hear. That just adds another layer as far as okay, here's here's how God's bringing that focus. I don't believe just to me, but to all of us as He's continuing to you know, build upon the revelation that he's giving us of, of, of kingdom living and walking this out, you know, that focus that he's bringing to us comes from hearing and hearing and hearing. So I'm telling you, Bishop, that is, I have pages of notes from last night that you don't even know about as such confirmation about what I know God's doing in me. And I believe he's doing in, in the body. And it's just, I'm blown away. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, it, isn't it funny though, Larisha, you know, and you, you'll get this. Isn't it funny? that we will put confidence in other aspects in which this plays this out. For instance, if I'm driving down the street and I hear sirens, mm. 
Mm. I'll start moving my car over quickly and parking to the side before I see one red light. Yeah. Before I see any flashing of mm. lights. I'm so tuned that when I hear a siren, it means pull over. If I hear a dog barking, I'm I'm tuned to knowing yeah. that I don't see the dog, but I'm running. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So there this all of we're already designed to do this. Yes. But for whatever reason, we miss the opportunity to do the same thing in the spirit realm, and that is to hear. And in hearing, again, it's not that you don't that you don't see it. You just you're not looking at it in natural eyes. Mm -hmm. You're responding to spirit. Mm -hmm. You're responding to the Holy Spirit that is in us. Yeah. So if I hear God say, I'm getting ready to bless you, and it's more than you can ever imagine, then I'm going to start in the spirit seeing yeah. provision. I'm going to yeah. start seeing in the spirit my needs met. I'm going to start seeing in the spirit my body healed. I'm going to start seeing in the spirit uh, God blessing us with new properties and new land and things to that effect. Every, everything that we, you know, the cathedral, the children, the youth complex, the youth center, the legacy center, everything that we are looking at is what I heard. Wow. Ooh. It's what I heard 30 years ago. Yeah. It's what I heard as a 12 year old. It's Everything we see now is what I heard then. You're standing, we're standing in what you heard. Don't get me started. <laughs> you are standing in what You're I heard. You're standing in what I heard. <laughs> Goodness. As the old folks used to say, I know what I heard. I know what I heard. Yeah. Listen, listen, let me, listen. I, I just wrote something down and I won't, if you, if people, everybody that's watching this, put it in the chat. And make this part of your prayer. Ask God, help me to effectively practice spiritual call and response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Help me to help me to effectively practice spiritual call and response. We know how to do it with a hymn. Yeah, we do. God me over thy great Jehovah. We know how to do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Come on. Woo. So listen. <laughs> I know what I heard. And it's funny, Bishop, you say that because I, I've I've used that that phrase in my own life. <laughs> You know, when me and my wife were talking, she's like, well, babe, I don't know about that. I'm like, babe, I know what I heard. I heard what I heard. We got to move. We got to do this. I know. And sure enough, we end up standing and walking in what I heard. Come mm. on now. <laughs> that is really That's good. Cool. Wow. Totally not in my notes, but Holy Spirit, <laughs> Holy Spirit does. So I <laughs> what he wants to do. Oh, my goodness. Whew. Yeah. So with that said, I think as much as I don't want to, I think we're going to have to kind of bring the phone in. Oh, I don't want to let this go. But uh, Bishop, was there anything in the teaching that you didn't get to share um, that you maybe wanted to talk a little bit more through? And if you got through everything you wanted to get through, um, what what would you encourage us to focus on and think through this week? Well, I, I think um, there's a whole lot I wish I could have shared because, again, this is such an inexhaustible, yeah. you know, an exhaustible uh, teaching when we talk about the Holy Spirit. But I would encourage that this week, uh, particularly since we're in our 21 day spiritual challenge, uh, we're reading a, a chapter out of the book of John. We are praying together. We are singing a song together. You'll find all of this on our website at uh, cop.church slash challenge. And um, I would encourage us all to practice intentionally in, with an intentional way of identifying how we're hearing God's voice speak to us. Again, I think that we dismiss it more than we give ourselves uh, acknowledgement. We dismiss hearing the Holy Spirit by saying, I felt, I thought, something told me. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to encourage us to be intentional with saying, to stop saying something told me, or I felt I, mm -hmm. I want to encourage the listeners to specifically in those places, pause and be intentional about saying the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Mm 
the Holy Spirit was guiding me. Now I'm talking about if it really is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk about something that you label it and it truly was your foolishness. You know, the Holy Spirit told me to go over there and speak to this man and invite him to lunch. And that's a married man. And you know he's a married man. Then <laughs> yeah, that ain't that 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 ain't God. Don't even don't don't lie on God. But, <laughs> Uh, I'm talking about the things we know for sure that we many times are dismissive. Something told me to go right instead of left. Something told me to be a blessing to this brother today. This is, no, 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 that's the Holy Spirit. Just yesterday, um, again, I'm not telling you something that I don't do. Just yesterday, I was driving on one side of town and the Holy Spirit spoke clearly to me to go and take a seed a financial seed and go to one of the workers at the church uh, that was one of the uh, gentlemen who was a vendor there at the church who was doing some work at the church and to go and sow a seed into his life to go and bless him. And again, I knew that was the Holy Spirit. And when I got there to the Legacy Center where I thought he would be working, uh, he was not there. And uh, and I thought, okay, well, he's not here. Well, maybe, and it was going to be, by the way, the only opportunity I would be able to see him because he's getting ready to leave mm -hmm. and go out of state. Mm -hmm. So uh, when he wasn't there, uh, I'm, I'm walking around and then I, I always tell people there will always be subsequent voices. <laughs> Yeah. After right. you hear the voice, yeah. there'll be subsequent, and these other voices will say, well, you did your part. He wasn't here. Go ahead and take this seed and go, you know, hit Popeyes up and go about your business. And the same Holy Spirit mm. said to me very clearly, stay here. He's going to come back. Mm. I'll be back shortly. He's probably at lunch. This will be your only opportunity to sow this seed to him, in him. And sure enough, within about 20 minutes, he came back and I was able to sow the seed. And again, I know that was the Holy Spirit saying that just by his response of receiving that seed. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, he used the term, I'm going to pay it forward. Well, however he terms it, in other words, I got blessed, I'm gonna bless someone else. That's what he was saying. Mm -hmm. See, now I don't know, listen, it may have been for me to hear God's voice, to sow a seed in this man, so that maybe two days up the road, he can sow a seed in someone else's life. Yeah. But that seed <clears throat> that he sows in someone else's life traces all the way back to me hearing God's voice three days yeah. ago. You see, so again, be intentional, beloved. Be intentional. Just start saying, Holy Spirit. Start saying, God spoke to my heart. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. The Holy Spirit directed me. Be intentional about it. Let's see what God's going to start doing. We start talking, talking. Can I say it like this? Holy Ghost talk. Oh, yeah. And we start yeah. talking, Holy Ghost talk. <laughs> Holy Ghost talk, Holy yeah. Ghost communication, Holy Ghost, uh, how we we identify that the Holy Spirit is present with us and in us all the time. And there's constant communication going on uh, through our lives. That would be my encouragement to the saints. Mm. Mm. Mm, my goodness. <laughs> Ms. Lewis, anything you want to encourage the saints with for this week? Um, for this week, I said it uh, a few minutes ago, and I'll say it again, I think in your personal time of prayer, um, and as you go about your day, just ask God to, again, say, help me to effectively, uh, effectively uh, practice um, call and respond, spiritual call and response. Yes, sir. God, God, help me to effectively practice spiritual call and response, because mm -hmm. if you say something, I want to be able to respond to your voice because you're my shepherd. I, I want to be able to listen, yes. right? I don't want to be oh, disobedient. I don't want to be just out here astray because if I'm astray, there's, go, there's going to be some thief out here who may take me, who may try to swoop me up, right? But help me to just in, be, in, again, intentionality, like Bishop just said, intentionality, please. 
So I think that that's my encouragement to the people. So uh, thank you, Bishop. Uh, again, wonderful, wonderful stuff. It's so much to unpack. <laughs> it's still a whole lot to unpack, y'all. <laughs> Go back and listen to it again. Please, I encourage you. Go back and, and unpack it. And I, and I would say this, and I'll add this last thing. Go back and listen to it. But listen to it um, with the intention to really hear what God is saying to you, really hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to you through this. Because he, because it may not be through the point of talking about the ear, but it may be through the point of the, the thumb, right. through your action. Right. It may, it, the Holy Spirit may really be speaking to you through the, the big toe, right? Talking about that and even the anointing of the head. Right. So go back and listen and ask the Holy Spirit to really speak um, through and again, speak to you through that. And you practice intentional call and response. Mm. Y'all, I tell you, thank you to both of you so much for your time this week. I really, really appreciate it. And again, Bishop, thank you so much for pouring into us. Um, thank you. You already do that week over week with the, the teachings that you give to us. But I really think these times uh, that we have together is very special. So I, we just appreciate Amen. the time and just, um, you know, we just get to, to hang out with our bishop and you speak <laughs> to us, you speak into us. And I, that is it's a privilege and a, and a blessing. So thank you so much for that. So, well, with that family, um, again, as Minister Lewis said, make sure you're re-listening to the message. Share this with your Omni groups. We're loving the discussions that are coming out of that. We're loving the comments that you're leaving on our Facebook page. It's really great discussion and good questions. So continue to do that. And until next time, have a wonderful week. See you then.